Ever since I watched this disaster of an anime called School Days, I forced myself to believe there could be better romantic relationships than severed heads and sailing boats. And that's how I got into the romance genre. And it's nearly been seven years now, and I can hopefully call myself a romance anime expert. Now, I know how normally people react to lists like these, so rather than summarizing the entire anime, I'm going to go forward and say why it is good. And after listening to my arguments, then you can go to the comment section and say why your favorite anime isn't in here, okay? Without waiting, let's dive right in. Released in the summer of 2020, this anime brought some fresh tropes into the harem genre. You got three girls, one bitch, all somehow in love with the main character, who is dumb as stone. I know some decisions of the main character may throw you off, but what I liked about Rent a Girlfriend is the way it clearly paved the road for one victor. Even though you know there are other girls, you can already feel who is going to win the game. It was also great to see these girls adopt different personalities and display different traits rather than being a regular Tsundere and Derry Derry and all that. Overall, Rent a Girlfriend was a fun, enjoyable watch in the summer season, and with its tension filled scenarios and rather playful situations, that always managed to keep me hooked. Most romance anime come with a slice of life tag attached to it, so all of them take place in a modern setting. Even if we move into a fantasy setting, the romance anime is there simply as a subgenre or just as an element to hook the viewer, but Snow White with red hair actually managed to deliver us an interesting romance fantasy show. It may start off in a Disney fairy tale style with the good prince and bad prince and innocent girl, but then it focuses on the girl's adventure and how she learns to be a medic in the good prince's castle. The premise is simplistic, but each of the characters has a backstory. Yes, even the so-called white knights that save the damsels in distress. This makes the story more unique and makes us actually empathize with the characters. <laughs> Have you ever put ice into a boiling pot of water? At first, it might dissolve really fast, but then you need to turn off the fire and drop a bucket load of ice, and only then will the pot slowly cool down. Yep, that's the scenario of Maid Sama. A really hot-headed feminist begins a feminist movement inside a school, but also works as a maid to earn a family income. She meets the most badass guy in the school, who likes to lean on corridors, stalk girls, and jump off roofs, and the hot-headed girl slowly cools down, and shows that tsundere's do warm up when soaked in ice-cold water. <laughs> Ah, that's funny. Alright, anyways, Maid Sama may feature a Tsundere slowly falling in love, but before you say it's been done a million times before, know that this story features a slowly blossoming romance. And in the very first episode itself, you may feel like punching the girl in the face due to her double standards, but then you'll realize that's part of her character arc. <laughs> Nope, this show is not about bunny girls, and I'm sure you've heard that a million times before. But going into this, you might expect a funny romance with no serious plot, but then just like me, you'll be surprised by how it handles the social situations of each character, while shining the spotlight on real world issues. You've got social anxiety, depression, loneliness, trust, and things you might have experienced at least once in your life. To be honest, this should go more into the slice of life category, but there's also the romance of Sakuda and his bunny girl, and how the two slowly find they are the perfect match for each other. So yes, it's about a guy solving real life issues with a girl who is dressed as a bunny girl. <laughs> Now this one starts slow, I mean slow enough for the duo to sit in the classroom, look at each other from the corner of their eyes and say, ah shit, here we go again. But after the slow start, you'll be rewarded with an incredible and original romance anime that is full of both love and emotion. And by that, I don't mean that the story is going to get complex, it keeps the same simplicity throughout the whole series, but instead puts more effort into building the personalities of our main characters. And that's what I love about this anime, is how they manage to do it subtly. As a writer, I can clearly say that this show is a good example of the golden rule, show, not tell. You are not directly given a clue about their behavior behavior, but it's their eyes, their expression, their dialogue, their body language that truly tells you what they want to say. This is definitely in my top 10 high school romance anime list. <laughs> Urseo.
All the romance I spoke of until now involves high schoolers, the big guys with big issues. But what about the small guys, the elementary youth where you got butterflies in your stomach every time you met your crush or tried hard figuring out the scientific equation for love? Yes, teasing Master Takagi-san is about middle schoolers, specifically a shy boy and a bullying girl. Now what might annoy some of you is the same formula is repeated again and again like your average Scooby-Doo episode. For those of you who don't know, it goes like this. Girl starts bullying boy. Boy thinks of a plan. Boy's plan fails. Girl wins and gives a smug smile. But for me, rather than the annoyance, it was actually pretty funny and lighthearted. This is one of those anime that make you go back to your childhood and reminisce about the things that happened and laugh at your own past. Now I didn't have a girl like Takagi-san back in my middle school years, but I have plenty of close memories with this anime. If Bakemonogatari is good at one thing, that's wordplay. You've got ample dialogue flowing here, and they're sometimes mixing lines of love, life, or even philosophy. Combine that with the creative mix of Studio Shaft, and you've got a romance anime that you can watch with only your ears. Yes, honestly think of Bakemonogatari as an audio podcast. The anime is much better with the amazing visuals of Studio Shaft, but the lines of the author Nisio Isin are what takes this anime to the next level. It goes on the usual harem route, and sometimes blurs the line of the main character and side characters, but overall a solid watch. But make sure to keep your ears open in this one. Once again, we have a romance anime without high school. With Takagi-san, we spoke about kids doing kiddie things, so this time it's about college students doing college stuff, but with amnesia. Yes, the main character here has the usual no memory so no personality syndrome, and serves as only a background character in the first two to three episodes. Events happen around him, but he's numb. But then he proposes to the girl by the seventh episode, and only then his character finally gets the spotlight. The manga of Golden Time is written by the same author who wrote Toradora, so there are clearly some common elements in the two stories. But more than anything, what I liked about Golden Time is the female cast. especially. Kuoko and Nana. And by like, I don't mean in terms of waifu material, but liking because of how original and refreshing they are compared to many female anime characters nowadays. <laughs> Okay, before starting, I can see how people discuss whether this is related to ReZero, but come on people, how can a high school romance anime be related to ReZero? At least if the main female character had white hair, we could call her Echidna, but clearly that's not the case. Real life adapts the usual going back in time to high school plot, but rather than focusing on the time travel, it focuses on how our main character develops over time. And rather than that, what I like about this show is the main female character, Chizuru. No, not that Chizuru, is the ideal version of Mikasa Ackerman in high school without Eren. She is numb, has no personality, and rather than these being flaws, these are what makes her such an interesting character. The romance is definitely more unique with a girl like her on the lead, so just for its uniqueness and the slow themes it builds, it deserves number 12 on this list. <laughs> Did you ever have the pain of leaving away your childhood, the problems you get when you slowly start to grow up and mature, and realize you won't be able to enjoy the same things you enjoyed as a child without being called too childish? Love Chunibyo and Other Delusions started off as an anime that gave off laughs simply because of the 8th grade syndrome of characters, but along the way it evolved into something that exposed what it's like to abandon your childhood. And if there's one word you can associate it with, it's cute. Trust me, you can feel really wholesome after watching this anime. <laughs> Cancer. Whenever some guy in some place wants to make a tragic love story, all they do is, yeah, 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 let the boy and girl meet. Oh wait, guess what? The girl has cancer! Now I'm not a doctor, I'm just an anime reviewer, so I believe fatal pancreatic illness means cancer or something close to cancer. From the very way it starts, you could say this anime is going to destroy both your pancreas and your heart by the time it ends, but similar to every sad anime, this discusses how the main character slowly opens up to other people, learns his flaws, and then wishes he was born in another anime world. But rather than anything, I want to eat your pancreas has a way of hitting close to your heart, and this is one of the very few sad anime I've watched, because normally when I watch sad anime, I just pause the video during the climax and put it into my to be watched list. But I couldn't do the same for this, because one, this was a movie, and two, the story is so interesting. Huh? <laughs> 
Now I know we all love silent girls. Why? Because they're the complete opposite to Tsundere's. Instead of screaming and acting like they are on a four year long period, these girls are more like the background characters, but at the same time, you know the story is focused on them, and this is why it is so refreshing to see them develop over time. In this case, it is Mashiro Shina, a manga artist who is also silent, doesn't know social rules, doesn't give a damn about what happens around her, and more than anything likes to keep her mouth shut. The story is about how each of these characters comes out of their shells and changes their own lives, as well as the lives of the people around them. It's a story of change, a story of character development, and a romance anime with a slowly budding romance that takes time until it ends in a satisfying yet longing conclusion. And before anyone says it, Sheena is the best girl. Most often, romance anime always adapts the same old tropes to generate emotionality during tension-filled scenes, and even though we cry and smile, we also feel a little worn out because we've seen that a million times before. But then there's this guy, called Makoto Shinkai. This guy actually knows how to write emotion better than the guy who invented tears and tissue boxes. 5 centimeters per second, children who chase lost voices, the garden of words, your name, weathering with you, all of these combine raw motion with superior animation that shows you the potential of the anime medium. And out of all of these, the reason why your name stands out is because of its realism and simplicity. You start off with a simple body swapping before evolving into a story about each of them finding meaning in life and what it's like to be yourself. And it also has the Makoto Shinkai feel in it. I mean, look at how many train scenes there are in this anime. <laughs> This anime has struck so close to my heart because every time I see a violin, I feel like smashing a piano. In terms of both themes and tone, this is very similar to I want to eat your pancreas, but this time they don't tell it's going to have a sad ending. And before you say I spoiled you the story, let me tell you soon, you're going to thank me for telling this has a sad ending. Because when your line April makes you cry, it makes you cry so hard your parents think you need some sort of heart surgery. It does this by carefully developing the characters, making them likable, making the relationships more real and interesting, and then finally breaking them all down in front of your eyes. And when the end credits starts playing, you remember these small moments between the two characters and how much it meant to both of them, then you start crying again. Now before you say I keep bringing on sad anime, let me tell you, Clannad is not sad. Clannad after story is sad. So all you have to do is watch Clannad and then pretend after story never happened, right? But we all know this won't happen, because as soon as you end the first anime, you get this urge to find out what happens to the characters afterward. Then you watch all of the second season and end up with a heart attack. If I want to eat your pancreas and your line April's 10 out of 10 when it comes to sad anime, then Clannad after story is like 100 out of 10, the ultimate super saiyan form of sad anime. The thing that will break your heart so bad you will stay depressed for weeks, crying alone and finding the best ways to kill the guys who made this anime. <laughs> So after all that sadness, let's move into a more lighthearted one. Horomiya is about two people with secret personalities trying to bond together. At least that's what the synopsis said. But the reason why I liked this anime is because of how simple their relationship is. The secret personalities are only a cause to start the relationship, but there on forth, it really appears as a major cause to alter the story. But this romance anime is the definition of being simple. Instead of the two taking one goddamn season to confess to each other, they do it by the fourth episode. And our main character, being a genius, does the confession while the girl's asleep on the bed, and then leaves like nothing happened, and then later on says it again. I know, right? This guy's a true genius. This way the girl is left confused and she realizes that rather than dragging this on for the rest of the season with unwanted problems and social differences, I should say I like him right here and now. There you go! Simple and mature, easily in my top 5 favorite romance anime. <laughs> Swapping bodies, again, but this time instead of two, there are five of them, and it involves an alien. Kokoro Connect is one of the most original and daring premises I've ever seen. Each of the female characters except for the sweet Inabon were sourced to some type of archetype, and the male character seems to have no depth. But then it brings in this alien body swapping mechanic and uses it to put us in the shoes of each of these characters. Through this, we get to learn why the blonde guy chases the blonde girl, and why this blonde girl is insecure about relationships. Why Inabon acts like a leader at times, and then like a Tsundere. Why this guy seems to get all the girls, while still 
having the face of every generic main character in the anime, and what it's like to be the fifth wheel. Rather than a romance anime, this is like a self-study, but this also helps us understand the basis of the romantic relationships. And Inaban is best girl, no arguments. <laughs> Before starting this anime, I didn't have a favorite letter in the English alphabet, but after watching this, my favorite letter became Y, because there are so many wholesome things in this anime related to the letter Y. My Team Romantic Comedy is one of those anime that goes in a completely different route from what the title implies. Just like Bunny Girl Senpai, it starts off with a regular antisocial guy with trust issues before turning into this high school drama you need to watch twice to actually understand what they are speaking about. And for the first time, we actually seem to have a main character whom we can sympathize with. The anime survives on this basic formula of our main character, Hachiman being the savior in all situations. Thus, influencing both him and the people around him. To be honest, all the jokes in this anime felt bland to me, and there was nothing funny about any of the situations. I used to think this anime was a comedy, but now I realize it's a tragedy. Or it depends on which girl you were cheering for. those of you who have watched a few of my other anime compilation videos know I'm a sucker for Sayakono. I feature as number one on many lists, even when the first season looks like something made by a divorced housewife who started smoking weed. In the first season, the characters were just 2D, and it's pretty ironic since the goal of them is to make a 2D game. And they always refer to the main girl as a 2D girl. But the real things start hitting in the second season. Each of these characters get their own arcs, it builds up tension, more interesting events happen, the main girl finally gets focus, and then comes Sayakono's finale. This movie hits your heart faster than Godzilla hits King Kong because it wraps all the emotion, character moments, and tension gathered in the last two seasons, and then smashes it all into your brain. It slaps your face until you begin to admit Megumi Kato is a goddess, and you should start your own religion around her. A 100 out of 10 anime. <laughs> I still remember the first time I watched Toradora. It was one of those lazy summer evenings where you find watching anime is much better than doing schoolwork. But the very first episode was nothing but disappointing. I saw Ryuji and I thought, what a generic main character. I saw Taiga and thought, if she's the main character of this show, I'm going to kill myself. Fortunately, I didn't have to kill myself because from the second episode itself, the anime starts getting interesting. The goal of the main characters is to somehow get the attention of the one they like. And because of this, they strike a mutual agreement to become temporary friends. Unlike many other anime, Toradora doesn't try to make its main characters pretty or really cool. Taiga is never meant to be waifu material, and Ryuji isn't meant to be a cool guy who gets the girl. But in the end, that's what they become. The anime does it by giving more depth to these characters and building up situations that either make us sympathize with them or force us to acknowledge why these two would make the best couple. It is one of those animes I cannot explain in a few words because there's a lot of stuff elements in it that makes it so good. If someone says there's a better romance anime than this, I'm going to send them an uncensored version of Boku no Pico.